Honestly, dude, my channel receives so few views, I could probably do a murder on this channel and then never be questioned by the police. I want to get this channel to a point where if I ever committed a murder on this channel, police would be straight round because there'd be like 150,000 complaints have come in because you've had, you know, 300,000 views, assuming one out of every two complaints. <laughs> Okay, hola, what is going on? Welcome to Retro Football Revolution. My dog's over there, his name's Mickey, he's a chihuahua, he's a lovely boy, or at least he is today, because he does sometimes behave not like a lovely boy and uh, likes to sink his teeth into um, my unexpecting flesh. Chihuahuas will do that, just to let you know. One second. And apparently you're not allowed to drink out of an espresso cup if you're British. We're not allowed um, to do anything that is even, if it's not a pint or a cup of tea, we're apparently just not allowed to do it. So that's, that's cool. What else? Complained about my country after the first few seconds. What else have I done? I've mentioned my dog. What I've not done is mentioned retro football, which is, as the t-shirt will attest, it's what the show is about, don't know if you can see that. It's a three-stripe classic that has sold no, uh, I was going to say copies, but that's sort of like records or CDs. Units, that's what you say, it's sold no units, this t-shirt. What I wanted to talk about was Argentinian football. Now, I thought it was way too obscure to ever do a YouTube video on because who's going to be searching for retro Argentinian football? And if you are searching for that, the likelihood is is you're a spanish speaking person and you probably wouldn't want to hear even if you can speak english you wouldn't want to hear an english person talk about retro football in your country but netflix sent something down from the heavens called football de primera it's a documentary about this show called football de primera that went for 20 years and it's like an institution in Argentina. It's basically like a cross between Match of the Day, if it was paired with sort of Saint and Greavesy or Football Focus, where they do interviews and, and stuff like that. And it used to be shown in Argentina on Sundays, and it would contain highlights of the best matches from the Saturday, and it would also have interviews with players and managers and probably like fans and stuff like that. Um, and this documentary dude on Netflix is so good. Just type Football de Primera into Netflix and it just and then just enjoy three episodes. And it's it, it's wicked dude. It's such a good show. It starts from it like segments it in, in years. Let's say the first episode goes from nineteen eighty five to like nineteen ninety three or something. And then each episode is the starts off from the year that the previous one finished on. I could have said that way more succinctly and better um but i didn't and that's just the way it is so based on that based on that there's me thinking okay seeing as this show is now popular on the uk netflix surely now there's a market that wasn't there before like even a, like two months ago this market just didn't exist for doing english language videos about retro argentinian football but I mean, there's YouTube niches and there's YouTube niches, isn't there? And that is a YouTube niche, dude. Retro Argentinian Premier League football. I'll basically be doing some videos on that, which I've wanted to do for a long time. But who's kidding who? No one watches this fucking channel. So I could do literally whatever I want. I could probably break a lot of laws on this channel and no one would see it to complain. So I could probably get away with it. Honestly, dude, my channel receives so few views, I could probably do a murder on this channel and then never be questioned by the police because no one no one would ever see it so but that's hopefully going to change hopefully i want to get this channel to a point where if i ever committed a murder on this channel police would be straight round because there'd be like 150,000 complaints have come in because you've had you know 300,000 views assuming one out of every two complaints um so so yeah i mean it's a weird way to assess what you want your youtube success to reach uh, it is a weird thing, and that was just a squeak from the chair if you if you didn't know what that noise was. Um, but, you know, we are where we are, it is what it is, and we go again. We go again. So, Argentinian football, it's a wonderful world, and it's a wonderful history to explore. And it's kind of why 
Okay, so previously I've done a video on Kevin Keegan and his so-called rant when he was at Newcastle against Man United and Alex Ferguson when he pissed him off. So my thoughts on that have always that that wasn't over the top. Kevin Keegan was just showing passion. If anything, because there was TV cameras there, he sort of dialed it down a lot because you can't swear, you can't go really over the top. So if anything, it was brought down from how passionate he really wanted to be. But the thing about England is we see any glimpse of emotion and we English people just assume that that person's having a mental breakdown when really, no, 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 we're just showing, we're trying to show some emotion. This is not the England of the 1950s where for some reason we're allergic to emotion. It's the 21st century and we should be able to speak uh, kind of like people from Spain do or, or Italy or France. They're a very sort of... Especially Italian people, they're very, they use a lot of hands because they're very sort of emotive and everything. So I would, I would like English culture to be a little bit more like that in the sense that if someone gives their opinion, we don't immediately think that they're losing their mind. They're just giving us what is inside of them kind of a thing, which is what you want from people. You don't want them to give safe kind of political answers because they're afraid of the backlash. If no one made a big deal out of things, we would see a lot more interesting interviews on the TV and this is exactly what happens in Argentina because if you if you like took someone who's been watching Argentinian football for 30 years 40 years whatever and you showed them Kevin Keegan's interview and then after they'd seen the interview you said to them right in England this is considered to be a massively over the top like meltdown they would laugh straight in your face dude because that would be in their terms, that would be such a tame, run-of-the-mill interview that it, no one would even make a thing of it, let alone 30 years later still be talking about it. So that's one of the things I love about Argentinian football is that the emotion is just always there and it's always present. And if anything, it's more out of the ordinary to see a bland interview than it is to see some fire from people. El Fuego! Tenga el fuego, they have the fire, and I don't know what the word for, for they is, so basically I just said, I just said have the fire, so, or has the fire, which probably doesn't make grammatical sense, but we are learning as we go with the Spanish, so, esta momento mi española es muy minimale, and that's really wrong, first of all I said española, which isn't, I don't think that's ever said, it's español, or castellano, but it's never Española, so I did kind of make a bit of a fool of myself there. But we're trying, and we're here every day, which is the main thing, dude. If you've got skin in the game, you stay in the game, but you don't get a win unless you play in the game. And that's a direct quote from uh, the musical Hamilton. So we will bear that in mind every day, and, and we'll keep moving forward. Anyway, dude, I've done a lot of rambling on this video, and I'm not really sure what the point of it is other than to tell you that I'll be doing videos on Argentinian football because a market has now opened up for retro Argentinian football. We will be back at a certain point with a more specific video, but this is a video just because to tell you I was excited about future prospects. So it's an update, it's an announcement, uh, it's a statement of future intent, but it's also to demonstrate... Okay, so if I'm going to do a football channel, I need to... Yes, we talk about football, we talk about this, that and the other. But also, I need to get across to you, the viewer, what my personality is. And that personality isn't normal. It's a li I mean, by my demeanour in this video, you can probably tell that I'm not like a perfectly normal person. Which is fine. It's fine. You don't have to be a normal person as long as you're nice to people and you mean no harm. You can be as weird as you like, uh, as far as I'm concerned. But I think... Sometimes the point of a video isn't to do a video, it's to sh it's to just to tell the sort of communicate with you who I am and if I communicate correctly and accurately who I am, that gives you the, that leaves the viewer going, okay, do I like the weirdness of this dude? And if not, you don't come back. And if you do like the weirdness of this dude, then you click subscribe and you know what to expect in the future. So, um, you know, that's probably, yeah, I'd say that. I'd say that's a decent point to end on. Also, I need a tan. Um, and when I say a tan, I just mean a tan so I look like a normal human being because this doesn't look healthy at the moment. You know, you know, I know I'm a white person, I'm a Caucasian adult male, but there's Caucasian adult males and then there's being as white as an A4 sheet of paper, dude. I mean, if you see, there's a white set of bookshelves behind me 
and behind that there is a white wall. My skin doesn't look a million miles away from the shade of either of these of these things. So, you know, that's probably something that has to be worked on and sorted out. And if you're watching this video thinking, he doesn't look that pale, it's all right, I think he's being a bit harsh on himself. It's probably because in the editing process, I have made the color scheme so that I do look a little bit better. Uh, but, but rest assured, in real life, it looks shocking. So with that said, um, I hope to um, have entertained you enough that you feel like hitting the subscribe button. And I feel like, uh, I hope I've entertained you enough that you feel like hitting the like button and also coming back to watch future videos. So I know that's a lot, that's a lot to, a lot to ask of myself, it's a lot to ask of you. Um, but we live in a demanding world, so I'd say that that's, that goes in keeping with things. Anyway, uh, love you, bye. That's, that's the way I like to end things. I don't think you have to know someone to say, all right, love you, bye. You know, that's the way I end phone calls. Um, do you know what, I, I think I'm gonna start doing that, not just with family, uh, but I think I'm just gonna, if I have to, ever have to call my bank, I think I will just, cause it, it's not embarrassing because you don't stick around to hear their response. You just go, okay, love you, bye. And then you just hang the phone up. So, um, all right, I'll end this video. All right, love you, bye.